Good morning. Happy Monday. Monday, April 27th. And this is the live drawing party. And I am Danny Gregory. And I don't know, it's Monday, but I feel good. I don't know about you. There's something about the weekend. It felt restful. It felt like a break. I feel like anxiety levels, or at least my anxiety level, has kind of shifted a bit. Who knows? Like many things, it may shift back again. But today, I'm feeling good, and I'm glad that you're here with me. Fran in Toronto and Maria somewhere. Maria Stor- Marion Stork in Nova Scotia, David Elliott, and uh, many other folks. I'm glad that you're all here with me today to do some drawing. One of the exciting things that happened this weekend was we did a live workshop, Kosha's killer sketchbook filler, and it was really enervating and fun. It was, uh, there was a lot of, a lot of productivity, a lot of uh, excitement, and we did a, a lot of drawing and prepared the path for a lot more drawing. Another thing that we did also is we uh, announced the next workshop which is going to be coming up in a few weeks. And I'm going to share with you a little preview snippet of what that's going to be about, because I think it's going to be really fun. But um, I want to get a little bit more business out the way before, before we continue. One of which is, if you do any drawings today and you'd like to share them with me, please put them on social media and use this hashtag hashtag, or what used to be known as pound symbol, for those of you who may remember the days of touch tone telephones, hashtag SBS drawing party. So just slap that somewhere on your thing. And um, what else? Uh, Also, does this, is this going to work? Yes. So um, this is the URL for you to sign up for my list. You're, up, you're gonna be on my list. What does that mean? It means that I will send you stuff that I'm making, writing, thinking about, uh, just for you, stuff that I'm making up. And uh, put your name down there and I'll send it to you. I sent one out on Friday. I got a lot of good response from it. It's basically a thing I will email you. Some of you guys are gonna be showing up late this morning, confused. Uh, bewildered. Why? Because at the workshop, if you were at the workshop on Saturday, I said I was going to take today off. And I was until this morning. I thought, no, I feel like drawing and I feel like drawing with you. So I'm not going to. Here I am. We have a few fits and starts as we launch this live stream, but we're here and so are you. So that's good. Okay. So those are the two pieces of business I usually talk about, which is how to share your drawing with me, gone, and how for me to share my ideas with you. Danny's list, hyphen list, hyphen is silent. So today, um, we're going to do something calm and meditative. I hope you're in the mood for that, to start the week off in a gentle way. We're going to just do some, some animal drawings from observation. I have a little treat to share with you on how we're going to do that, which I think is very sweet and nice, and I hope that you'll enjoy it. Um, Thank you all for coming here. Uh, Julie in Philadelphia and Maria in the Netherlands and Hans Christian Christian in Germany, uh, Missy in Pittsburgh, Audrey in Montreal, Ermgard, South Australia. I don't know if you know, but I... Spent some of my formative years living in Canberra um, when I was a youth. So, uh, sort of southern Australia, right? Um, is this the current? And Hans Christian asked if this if the animals ran away. Yes, they did, but they will return as animals will do. Um, Fat Hobbit enjoyed the workshop on Saturday, and it's rebooted my daily practice. That's excellent. Fantastic. I think that's what it de- was designed to do, was to like really give you s- so many ideas on what to draw and to take away any excuses you have about what you uh, don't know how to draw. Don't know what to do. Can't blank page anxiety. 
So the next class, and I wanted to share um, a little thing with you. The next class is going to be called Brush and Line, the Watercolor and Ink Workshop with Onmar Wynn. Some of you may know Onmar. She's an incredibly talented artist, an illustrator. Um, she designs she designs a lot of things that end up being made into things. Fabric, tea towels, greeting cards, things like that. Um, so her art has real visual appeal and is, is friendly, fun, and she does beautiful things with ink and watercolor that she's going to teach us about. I'm going to show you that in a second. So this is going to come up in a couple weeks. And let me just share with you a little kind of intro that we made with Omar to explain what this is about. Here we go. Hello, I'm Omar, and I'm, I'm an illustrator and sketchbook artist. I, I want to share, share with you a really fun watercolour pen and ink technique we can use for many purposes. I love this text. All right, I'm sorry. Omar, it sounded like she was possessed by the devil there for a second. <laughs> Omar, that's not good here. Let me try this again. Uh, here we go. Hello, I'm Omar and I'm an illustrator and sketchbook artist. I wanted to share with you a really fun watercolour pen and ink technique we can use for many purposes. I love this technique because you can be really loose and bold with the watercolour and once it's dry, go in with ink and add as much detail as you want. And since many of us have been spending a lot of time at home, we are going to be using items from our kitchens for this workshop. So take a good look at your cupboards or your pantry and find items like packets, boxes of cereal or pasta, jars, tins, and even take a peek in your fridge. I'm sure you've got lots of interesting items in your drawers, such as wooden spoons and also any cooking utensils. For this workshop, it would be great if you have a little bit of experience with watercolour. But if not, you should still be able to follow along. And don't worry if you don't have a dip pen and ink to hand, because I'll show you how easy it can be to achieve great results with a black fine liner. I can't wait to get started with this workshop, so please join me for this fun event. Okay, so thank you, Onmar. So, um, just to reiterate, this workshop is about doing and, and doing being the operative word because in this workshop you will do. You can sit and watch her do it and that's also a good thing, but you can also do it along with her and it's designed for you to do it along with her. And to do something that I think a lot of people are really interested in doing, which is how do you combine watercolor and ink line drawings? A lot of times we think of doing the ink line drawing and then sort of coloring it with watercolor. Omar does something very different and it combines this sort of organic flowing beauty of watercolor with the specificity and focus of line drawings. It's a technique that you will learn in roughly an hour from her, and I promise you, you will keep doing this for years. It's an incredibly useful technique. You can do it obviously for drawing things in your kitchen, but you can draw, do it for drawing people, you can do it for drawing landscapes, animals, whatever you want. It's a really great, great technique that we've never specifically focused on at Sketchbook School before. So I asked her if she would be able to put together this workshop and she did an amazing job. It's a beautiful, beautiful workshop and it starts in a few weeks. So if you're interested in finding out more about it, I would suggest that you go to sketchbookschool.com slash workshops and check it out. You'll find out more about it. You'll see more examples of her art um, and it's, it's gonna be a really valuable addition and it doesn't require an enormous amount of drawing experience, I would say. It's it's positioned as an intermediate workshop. Certainly, if you've never drawn before, it might be a bit too challenging. But if you've drawn a little bit, if you've only played with watercolors a little bit, she will take you through in a gentle but clear way that will really establish this as a purpose for you. So um, some of you may remember Onmar. Uh, she's taught uh, at Schedule School before. Um, and I think people just love what she did then. She did a whole bunch of different kinds of exercises, but this is me very focused and it's going to be a, a live workshop. So she's going to be there to talk to you and to answer your questions and to encourage you. And then when, if you want to post things in the schoolyard, she'll be dropping by to comment on it. Okay. Now let's focus on today. Today, what I thought we would do is draw sheep. 
Why sheep? Well, I found this great video that is called Relaxing with Sheep. You know, typical thing that we all want to do, relax with sheep. Um, it's made by a vineyard in Napa Valley in, Southern, in Northern California called the Schaefer Vineyard. You may have heard about this thing already. It's really, it's a, um, uh, it's a six hour video. We're not going to do six hours of it today. But it's basically just these very gentle rolling hills and sheep wandering around it. So I thought that would be a great thing to just watch and do little drawings of and to, to talk about how do you do drawings of animals when they're out wandering around, not posed, not in a, I mean, I was going to say not in a photograph. Obviously, this is a photograph because it's a video, but they are moving, but moving gently because they're grazing. OK, so um, and sheep are reasonably easy to draw. It's a big puffy body with some legs and a head. Um, so I think that'll be a nice way to start. But let's not get obsessed about whether we are drawing them well, but let's just enjoy the moment and sit with it. Um, I am going to draw with, uh, I'm going to use my O3 Micron and I'm going to use some paper and let's just get into it and see see how we feel about, about the visits to the shape. Uh. Um, so I think what I'm going to do probably is I'm going to, um, I'm going to probably draw, I'm going to probably skip around this video a little bit just when we get to parts that, like this that don't really have a lot of animals in them clearly, but here, like something like this, let's start here. So I'm going to just do a little drawing of, uh, of this guy here. I like his sort of face and eye. The guy lying here chewing his cud. I do like these noises that they make. So one of the things that we want to think about when we're drawing animals is that they move. You know, they'll move periodically, hopefully. That's the point. They're alive. You know, so, so you know, we don't want to think about that. I'm going to go back to that guy for a second. Well, actually, no. This is going to be part of the experience is we're going to hop around. So we're going to hop around and we're going to try different bits. So here, let's do this one. So, you know, just feel like you have to move. We're not trying to draw super detailed things. We're just trying to capture some of the gestures. And you might find like that where the animal disappears because the camera cut. Well, that's, that's actually what happens a lot of times when you are drawing animals. They move on. And then you're left with half a drawing. So what do you do? How do you capture it? That's one of the questions we had, we're going to think about today. Um, you know, just like how much of it can you capture? And also maybe having drawings of different animals combined into one. I'll explain what that means in a second. But one of the problems we have is, you know, like a, a situation like that where an animal crosses and blocks your view. Um, and lose it. This guy is allowing me to, to draw him quite a lot so I can go back and correct what I'm doing. Um, very strange faces, sheeps. Kind of, they sort of seem cute from afar, but they're kind of not that cute, really. Sorry, now you stopped looking at me. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean it. Didn't mean it. Um, yeah, I'm holding on him for now so I can do a bit of detailing. Um, noticing that his jaw is kind of leaner than I thought, and I guess I can relax a little bit here because it seems to be a bit more time drawing him. So. All right, I'm actually kind of sick of him now, so I'm going to move on to this other foreground sheep. I'm going to start working on him. Got his ear facing me. Got a very serene looking eyeball there. He's got, oh, he's got a bit of a nostril. Yes. Quiet, sort of serene look to him or her. Oh, okay, we're moving on. Got another sheep to do here. 
Let's see if I can... There's a dog involved as well. Okay. I'm going to try and get this sheep in the foreground. He's eating. He's moving. Arr. So this is an example of what I'm saying. So I started drawing him and he moved. Right? So now I'm going to draw him from the side or draw her from the side. And there's a car going by. Moved again. Okay. So you gotta, you got to be swift. This is the thing. It's like sometimes it's fast. Sometimes it's slow. Uh, yeah, there's a certain adrenalized, adrenal, adrenalized quality to doing this kind of drawing because you never know what's going to happen. Are they going to race off in the middle? Or am I going to get to spend a little bit of time looking at this nice black face? Okay. This is kind of empty of sheep, so I'm going to zoom ahead. Ah, here we go. Look at that baby lamb in the background. Look at that with a big head. That's cute. Lambs are just really cute. I like more baby animals. Big, he big head, big ears, little tiny tail. Let's draw the mother. The mother is just sort of a lump in the background. <laughs> She's completely a lump. She's sort of gone to sleep. So we want to add a bit of add a bit of shading to her. But now we see her face a bit. So I'm gonna put that face there. And yes, so there we go. And now. So as you can see, it's like the objective is not, of course, to draw a final drawing. It's just simply to study these creatures as they're moving. And you know, sometimes so I was saying earlier, you might want to take um, you might want to combine several animals into a single drawing. What does that mean? It means that if you see an animal uh, in one position and then it moves on, you might want to save that drawing. And if you see another animal in a similar position, you could go back and finish it by doing that, um, taking that same drawing and just using a new model. Similarly, you could also take that... So you, so you're basically creating a combination of several several people or, or sheep or dogs or whatever into one single study um, because you're not really capturing the particular particularities so for instance i'm going to go back to this one that i did before and um, this sheep is actually backwards from where he was but um kind of like this sheep here in the foreground so i might just use him or her as a the sheep experts out there can tell me what this, what the gender of these sheep tends to be. I guess rams are males. These are sheep. Anyway, so here's another little one. Big shoulder, big round body, and little tiny black ears sticking out. And then a bit of shading to represent that side thing. Now it's in profile, so it's changed again. So I can go back to my profile. This is that same sheep that I was drawing before has now returned to this position. And what's good about that is you'll see that with animals a lot, that they will go back and forth. And this is like, say, three or four different positions. And you can do different drawings of them in each position. So you could and, and track back and forth between these two. So now I can go back to this guy, and I can add a bit of shading to him. I can recognize that his body is actually a little longer than I thought. So, yeah, so that's part of the objective. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so you can see a bit more what I'm doing here. Less sheep, a little bit more. See, that's a sweet scene there with that, that lamb that's, I guess, feeding. And then the sheep is in the background. Yeah, so that's, she might stay like that for a little bit of time. Nope. Now, of course, we've moved on. All right, let me make these, my drawing smaller. Ma! Does this remind me of? Reminds me of... That great movie. Babe. Ma! Ma! Okay. Move the 
again. Don't like this scene very much. Aha, this looks good. Getting rich. Whoa, that's crazy, but we don't need that. Here we go again. Are you keeping up with me, or am I just making you insane with all this movement? That's part of the, that's, again, part of the thing about drawing live animals. Is there's, it's not predictable initially, but then you start to see patterns, and you start to see repeat, repeated behavior, repeated movements, and that's what you have to look for. The same is, is true for people, too. Like, if you watch somebody having a conversation, and you notice their gestures, sometimes it'll throw you if you try and treat it like a frozen moment. But if you look at it as a series of patterns, and you really start looking for what those patterns are, then you can go back and forth between the different moments and you can build on them. And so you don't get completely lost. You can sort of start to make some notes to yourself about like what are the basic things of sheep you know like what is the basic shape of the head um, you know so you can start to create a kind of a, a model a composite of a basic sheep and then once you get really used to doing that you can say to yourself okay I, I have the basic rules of sheepiness down but then you can say all right I understand like what they're likely to do when they're grazing and their heads are down. And then I also understand like a little bit about what they, what the relationship of the body is to the head and how thin the legs are. And um, you know, so figuring out these things gives you uh, a little bit of a, a vocabulary. So it doesn't seem so horribly new every time. And mm -hmm. you can say to yourself, okay, I understand the basics. I can now, create a shorthand, but then I can go beyond that to capture the specifics of each sheep. And that's really what you want, is you want specificity, but if you get overwhelmed by details, and you get overwhelmed by the change, uh -huh. then suddenly it seems impossible as an assignment. Carol, you haven't missed it. We're doing it. Just join us. And then go out and tend to your flocks. How nice to have your own sheep to draw. They are interesting, and um, they have good, good shaped bodies because they are. This is this combination of sticks and a ball in a way, but also um, these really interesting faces. The, the ears that stick out. See, see, I haven't really drawn sheep in this considered way before, but I'm starting to figure out some of the rules, how you draw them. You know, and again, this is what you want to do when you're drawing in any situation. So if you find yourself sitting in a cafe, drawing passersby, and we will one day find ourselves back in cafes, when that time happens, you're going to want to figure out, like, what are the basic rules of how people appear as they're waiting for the bus, for instance, like what are the, what are the elements that make it, make them, you know, um, what are the basic rules that people are following, in how they stand, what their weight is, what the relationships are um, between the different parts of their bodies, but then also, um, once you have that, you will feel more more confident, and therefore you can start to not get overwhelmed by the change, but instead start to focus on the specifics. And again, that's how you do a better drawing. It's because you're drawing the specific thing that you're seeing. So, so it isn't necessarily that there's a way to draw a sheep. It's more that there's a way to see, you see. And that's, that's really what we want, ultimately, is to develop strategies for seeing Strategies for seeing that help us to draw anything, to draw sheep, to draw airplanes, to draw peanut butter jelly sandwiches, 
whatever, it is we, whatever it is we find ourselves drawing, there aren't necessarily a set of, of um, you know, tips and tricks to capture the, the individual. It's not like, oh yes, here are four things you do when you draw a sheep. Draw a ball, draw some sticks. It's not that. That's not the, that's not the goal. The goal is not to, to um, learn these tricks. It's to learn an overall strategy. And the overall strategy is how do I break down what I see into manageable elements so that I can capture without feeling completely overwhelmed by a movement and change. Yeah. And, and so, so some of it comes down to just, just getting this confidence in how you move your hand. Like, how do you move it fast enough? so that it works. And my drawings here that I'm doing, as I said, I haven't really drawn sheep much before, but as I'm drawing them, they're starting to look more sheep-like. See, I started here with this guy, very specific, right? And now I'm kind of getting into these things, which are much more, um, they're sheep-like, but they're more, I just feel more confidence in how I'm drawing them. So I've learned in like the five minutes, ten minutes that we've been doing this, I've been learning some, some tricks about how to see as opposed to tricks about how to draw sheep. Like what are the, what are the first things I want to look at? What, is it the, it's like I'm feeling like it's the overall shape, which is it's kind of lump. And then uh, at the dark area back behind the leg, the back leg seems to be a crucial thing. And then the ear gives it some sheepiness um, and just this overall contrast between the big fluffy body and the thin black legs. I think to me this is this little sheep here is just a butt and some legs. But it feels like a sheep. So yeah. See a bit of a head there with an ear, and you know that it's a grazing sheep. So, they make a lot of noise eating these guys, don't they? And can you draw two together, and is that one shape? You know, if you see one in the foreground, one standing in front of another. Maybe together they make up one shape, and then that might be a nice thing to focus on, just how these two together are one. His head up, his ears out, on down, his stomach underneath, back leg coming back, ear going there. And now he's moved. I was really lucky to catch her that much of him. A lot of you seem to be preoccupied with what the nature of this video is and why they have so many sheep here. That's, I was wondering the same thing, so I'm glad you're finding that out. Hopefully that will lead you to go back and actually draw these guys. Because this, this, this six hour video, as I said, is kind of crazy. Diana, welcome to the workshop. I'm glad that you've joined. I hope that uh, you'll enjoy it. I think it will be a very useful experience. All right. Is that overwhelming? I mean, it's nice to knock out a whole bunch of little sheeps like that all at once. Yeah, I mean, that kind of page is a really useful learning tool. Um, I put a link down below to this full six hour video if you want to do it, but there's something very calming about sitting there and just scratching out little drawings of this. I, I love this kind of like page full of 
different poses. Uh, my friend Roz Stendhal is a master of that. She goes to the uh, to the what's it called the state fair every year in Minnesota, and she does a lot of these kinds of drawings. Um, so if you don't happen to have critters around you like this, use this video. But but I think if you were going to draw your cat in your apartment lounging around, this is a great technique to use as well. So so to reiterate, it's like try and capture the sort of overall shape and then also try to combine. Um, like it's nice to have three or four drawings. Like say you have a drawing in one corner where the animals are kind of more or less in profile, you know, with its head, say, down. And you have another drawing where its head is kind of turned beyond its body and you can only see its body. And then you have another one where it's standing up and, um, you know, its, its backside is towards you. So if you have like four, five, six of these different drawings on the page at the same time, you'll notice that the animal is going to go back and forth circulating between these different positions. And so you can continue to work the drawing. So even if you only got one or two lines done in drawing A, chances are the animal is going to go back to position A again, and you can continue working on that. So you can end up with one page with lots of different drawings on it. And that's one of the techniques that we also use for, for drawing people in motion. If you have um, somebody in a conversation, they're moving their hands, they're going to, people have a natural kind of um, uh, vocabulary or an alphabet of movement. And by capturing it in snapshots altogether, you'll start to be able to go back and forth around and around. This is something that in the course People Drawing People, we spend a whole week on, on drawing uh, people in motion. And this is one of the techniques that we use is to, is to and it, it takes some practice, I think, to get to it, but it's really the only way to make drawings of people that don't look like they would if it was a photograph, right? If you have a photograph of a person walking down the street and they're in a particular position with their hands in a certain way and you do a drawing of that, it's not really gonna look like a person in motion. It's gonna look like a frozen person who's frozen. This technique, though, where you're really, your brain is moving quickly to do these snapshots, allows you to create feel, drawings that feel moving, although a person is in a, is in a, a comprehensible position. So I, I'm not just doing a blur of lots of different positions. I see kind of the one position that they're in, they're sort of talking like this, but there's movement in the way that I drew it, so therefore it feels like there's movement in the person's moment. All right, I'm not sure if you guys are paying attention, but um, I'm glad that this inspired a lot of conversation between you all. Um, yes, anyway, um, thanks for joining me today. I hope that you'll enjoy Own Mars Workshop, and I hope that you'll consider signing up for it. And uh, I'll see what we're going to do tomorrow. We'll meet again at the same time um, and draw something new. If you like drawing animals like this, if this is something you're interested in, let me know. Um, I, it seemed like a, a situation a lot of us are finding ourselves in now, kind of quarantined with pets. This would be a good skill. We could do it some more if you'd like. Um, maybe we can do it in a, in a more um, focused way. But tell me what you think. Tell me what you'd like, and um, I can try and deliver that. Okay. Thank you so much. Have a nice day, and I'll see you all tomorrow.